Welcome back YouTube to Alex Does DIY. Um, I'm Alex and again I'm doing some DIY. So this should now be video two in uh, my series on making a plastic injection molder. And um, to start with I'm going to be doing some of the work on the actual um, injection module itself. Um, so the materials that I'm using here are various sizes of galvanized pipe. Um, in terms of dimensions it doesn't really make too much of a difference to you because the size or dimension of these pipes is all really going to depend on um, the air round that you choose. Um, now this is one that I purchased uh, second hand although it is brand new or never used um, and the tip I would probably give you now in hindsight um, is probably go for one if you're going to follow the design that I'm doing uh, that has a shorter stroke. The stroke obviously refers to um, how far the ram comes out. So this is your stroke. Um, this one has quite a long stroke. As you can see, I don't have to take that here, of course, at the moment. Um, but it's quite a long stroke. So you've got to imagine um, having this mounted here and then also attached to the end is going to be a piston which I'll be making out of this piece of galvanised pipe um, so that's quite a long injection nozzle that's going to be mounted to the front of the machine um, if you went for something with a shorter stroke you could get the same capacity obviously by having a larger uh, diameter pipe for the injection module um, I've already ordered parts such as the heating bands which the heating bands are the devices that fit on top of this pipe uh, and melt the plastic uh, they're a certain diameter um, so if I was to go for a large pipe now um, I'd need to reorder those and that would just be a waste of money which is something I'm not completely into doing um, so I do everything that's all on, the, on the cheap um, okay, so to start with, um, this is the top part of the injection module. What's actually going to happen is this ram, as it turns out, fits snugly inside this pipe. It just comes to the top here. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is make a cap or a stopper to go on the end there. Now these uh, lengths of pipe um, could be welded together. Um, I'd rather not do that. I'm going to be uh, have them all screwed together or held in with uh, small uh, M5 size bolts because uh, I want to be able to dismantle it if need be and um, clean it out. So to start with what I'm going to be doing is taking this piece here uh, which does snugly fit on top of there. Uh, I'm going to weld a cap on the top here, I'll actually cut that a little bit shorter I think and um, once that's done I will drill and tap some holes so that it can be fitted to the top here. So we'll get started on that job first. There we have it. Not too bad a cut. It's not vital that it's in, that it's perfect. Now, the next issue we've got with this, uh, it is quite a tight fit. It can be got on there, but the reason why it's tight is because in here, and I'm not sure if it's going to pick up on the camera. I'll get you around there. You just see there, here, you've got. Um, the weld seam from where that pipe is welded together. So the next job is to get rid of that. Put that back in the vise. You need to grind that off and you can obviously do that with a file or anything. Um, I'm going to be using a good old die grinder. Okay, so 
spot on. I might just put a bit of a chamfer on that as well. And I'll just remove some of this burr around here. Now also, uh, once I remove that burr, I just beveled that edge slightly um, because I am going to weld a cap on there. I'm just going to cut a piece out of this galvanised bracket here to go on top. I'll weld that together. So I'll just mark that out and we'll cut that out. Um, it's gonna be, we're going to do the stick weld. Um, now the welder that I'm using, I don't know if you can see it there, it's only a cheeky. It's a, a Rossi uh, inverter stick welder. Uh, it goes from 10 amp up to 200. Um, and she's a pisser. Yeah, no, it wasn't too expensive. I bought that new off eBay for uh, $250, $300 I think. Um, and it's great. Anything that my mig can't do, um, it can do. Um, now, I'm not trained at all in welding. Had no no training whatsoever. Um, just bought my mig, which is a SIGWELD 135 amp uh, mig, uh, a couple of years ago and started welding until I could get it. Uh, I'm not a fantastic welder, um, but I do good enough to get the stud job done. Um, so what we're going to do is I'll uh, just tack this up and I'll take you in there now. Alright, can we see that? Alright, so I'm just going to tack this up and then we'll, uh, once that's done then we'll take it out, grind that top cap down to an even circle and then finish it off. So we'll see how we go with this. I'm using the uh, stick welder. And we'll set it to about 100 amps.
Alright, so what I've done there now is I've just, now that that was tacked on, is just uh, ground that down on the bench grinder. You can see that's, uh, I think you'll see that's um, fairly round now, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, with the stick welder again, just run a bead all the way around that cup. There we go, so we'll just run around that now with the uh, stick welder, I'll cool that off. And the water, so you can see that, that welding's not pretty. That uh, yeah. job's a good one. I think what we'll do, just to pretty that up, I'll run that around on the uh, bench vice again, on the bench uh, grinder. I'll clean that up a bit. There we go. Done. So what's that saying? Uh, you can't be a good welder, be a good grinder. Okay, so I decided to uh, tidy that up on the belt sander there, as you can see, that's why the paint's all gone. I've also, just with the angle grinder, uh, just marked a spot on both the cap and the pipe itself so that they, I can uh, line them up more easily in the future. So the next step is to drill and uh, tap uh, some holes around the outside here. Um, to hold that in place. So what I'll do is I'll stop you there, I'll take you over to the drill press and we'll get that done. Okay so time to uh, drill our first hole. I'll actually drill one hole, tap it and put the um, put the nut, the uh, bolt straight through that before I actually do any of the others just to make sure this doesn't slip and it stays lined up. So I'll just get that lined up here and again this is the beauty of having a cross slide vise on your um, drill press tables you can really get these lined up I have put a center punch mark there where I want that and I've set my drill speed according to the drill bit size and the material there we go so it's uh, Give this a go. And we're through nice and neat. So, what we're doing, the um, bolt that I'm putting in here is a M5 bolt. You can see that there, it's an M5 bolt, uh, 0.8 thread. So the correct drill size for this, um, this here is a 4.2 millimeter bit, which is what we've done. So next we have to tap that I've got a little bit of uh, cutting fluid here, so I'll pop that on, just a drop, and bring that down, see how we go. Just applying a little bit of pressure there, starting to work its way in. Every now and again you want to bring it, turn it in the opposite direction just to break the thread. You can see that very well. Again, back again just to break those threads. And 
sorry, break the chips, I mean, not threads. It's really nice all the way in by hand. There we go, jobs are good and right that cap's not going anywhere but I'm gonna chuck a couple more in just for good measure. Take that out. I'm happy with that. Jobs are good and that cap will not be coming off. Alright, so I think we'll conclude that as the end of uh, part two in this video series. Uh, so, a little bit of progress there. So, that's the end cap uh, put on there nice and securely. It will be able to obviously then be removed for cleaning purposes. And of course, the whole point of that exercise is that our uh, ram here will be able to slide in there. Like so. You may have an issue with clearing the um, where our uh, screw in uh, pneumatic air hose attaches there um, because this is going to sit right at the top like so so we may end up having a drill a little bit into that cap but anyway it should now sit in there like so um, it goes right to the end which is good um, the screws don't interfere with the end of that. Um, that's obviously going to sit up like this. The other part, which is just tucked here, will slide into there. We need to line this up with the seam. There we go. So it will basically sit like that. Um, so to give you an idea of how tall that is. Let me bring you down a bit. That's on the ground at the moment, so I will be taking a little bit off of that, I think. We'll see how we go, but it gives you an idea of how big this injection module is because I have gone with that ram. Anyway, I'm happy with that progress so far you enjoyed episode number two and uh, be sure to uh, like me like this video below wherever that lines up here um, and subscribe uh, to see more videos from me I'm Alex does DIY catch you later